All right, here we go. Let's run it up. You're watching Philadelphia 76ers now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. Coming your way. It is mailbag time here on the channel. You have questions. I have answers. Let's dive in. But before we do that, let's take a look at our August sub battle. Remember last week when we showed you this? We were lower on these rankings, and I told everybody, look, Philadelphia 76ers now is a great asset here at Chat Sports. We had a record summer, putting up some of the best numbers that any NBA channel has ever put up right here at this company. And look at where we are right now. Four subs away from overtaking New York Knicks now for the most subscribers picked up since August 1. Let's end this month with the bang. Let's take down the Knicks since the Sixers couldn't do it in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Hit that subscribe button for year-round coverage of Philadelphia, and you can get a lot of great content like this mailbag right here. News, rumors, analysis, breaking news. We just love talking ball with the Sixers Now family. Let's begin our mailbag call with this one coming in from Darren. Hopefully that is your name and I pronounce that right. Either way, love the profile picture of Joel Embiid. What would you say the Sixers starting lineup should look like and also who should be the second option at every position? So I'm glad that you asked this question because on yesterday's show, I saw somebody comment, why is everybody talking about Caleb Martin as the starting four for this team? Well, people are talking about Caleb Martin starting for this team because I think this is going to be the 76ers starting lineup. Tyrese Maxey running the one. Kelly Oubre at the two. You kind of have that wing forward hybrid in both Caleb Martin and Paul George giving Philadelphia a little bit of size. It won't be ideal against some teams. So maybe Nick Nurse selects to switch the starting five on a couple of different occasions throughout the regular season. Also keep in mind, they're definitely going to want to manage the minutes of Joel Embiid. So that could cause a switch in the starting lineup. I just think this is your best starting five with your best collection of talent. I also really like the versatility of this starting five. As for the backups at every position, you have Kyle Lowry and Reggie Jackson who can both run the one. You have Eric Gordon and Jordan McCain who can be at that two spot. You have Ricky Council. You have Kenyon Martin Jr., you have Yabaselli, Drummond, Adam Bona. Those are all kind of the backups there. And it gives you, I think, quality depth for this team moving forward. Like Jared McCain and Eric Gordon, they can knock down the three. You have Kyle Lowry, Reggie Jackson, who can handle the ball, play off ball a little bit. Bringing in Andre Drummond, a great backup option behind Joel Embiid. Adam Bona can play the four. He can play the five. So finally, Philadelphia actually has a great starting five with star-level talent, but they have some depth. And I really do think that Gershon Yabaselli is going to be able to impact this team on that vet men deal. Next up, IBN Keys. Why do I keep seeing Caleb Martin starting at power forward? Chip, there it is right there. I saw somebody comment it, and that's the comment that I was alluding to. So why should the Sixers start Caleb Martin at power forward? Well, he's 6'5", 205, 6'10", wingspan. So while he might be a little bit shorter playing power forward, is a really good versatile defender who can impact the game on both ends and has a very long wingspan. 50% of his minutes last year were at small forward. 40% of his minutes were at power forward for the Miami Heat. He can defend multiple positions, and we're talking about a player here who is tough, physical, and plays bigger than his actual stature. And in today's NBA chip, it has become a positionless game, a positionless product. So I don't think that people should worry about the numerical positions. For instance, the one, two, three, four, and five. Worry about the talent and the options at those positions with those different lineups. And especially with the 76ers as well, because you think about their starting lineup, right? That we mentioned earlier, their best five. Maxi, Oubre, Paul George, Kayla Martin, Joel Embiid. You might look at Kayla Martin and see that he's only six foot five and think traditionally he might struggle against some bigger fours, but look at the other players the Sixers are starting next to him. Paul George is a bigger forward. Kelly Oubre is a bigger player out in the wing as well. So it's he's surrounded by 
more, you know, taller guys, you know, Joel Embiid down low is going to be able to help as well. So I wouldn't really look at it as, oh, he's just starting power forward and he's small. Like, it's going to be a collective effort yeah. with other guys starting around the court. And he gives you that versatility with his, you know, ability to space the floor, whereas someone like, you know, a K.J. Martin, a Gershon Yabuselli, we don't really know what they're going to bring 100% on the offensive side of the ball. You know, I saw some people saying, we should just start Yabuselli. We should start K.J. Martin. I think starting Caleb Martin is, is the best route to go. I wouldn't be worried about him being smaller height-wise because, again, he does play with a physical toughness to his game that will help him be able to guard bigger players as he has for the past couple of years in Miami. So don't you know stress too much about him being the power forward. It's, as Chase said, positionless basketball anyways. Guys are going to be matched up in different spots. But I think him in the starting lineup does complete your best five. So you heard from us on that in answering that question, and it's a good question. I'm glad that you asked it. Should the 76ers start Caleb Martin? And how about producer Chep? I talk about that comment, then he pulls it up right away. We got the graphics to back it all up. Type S for start or B for bench as to if the Sixers should start Caleb Martin. These Team USA shirts are still flying off the shelves and celebrating America's gold medal win over Team France. Joel Embiid, a gold medalist, awesome to see, especially how well he played against Serbia in America's arguably biggest game of that tournament. Chatsports.com slash Team USA. Get your shirts today. We'll attach that link to the pinned comment of today's video here on YouTube. Joe, up next, what 76ers dream trade targets would be worth dealing three to five first round picks for alongside KJ Martin and some vet minimum contracts. We've kind of honed in on this list of five players as being available, realistic trade targets who would be really good trade targets for Philadelphia. I really like four players on this list. Nas Reed being number one, Dorian Finney-Smith being number two, and then Bobby Portis and Tari Ease and the others. Those are the players that I really like. I just think that Dorian Finney-Smith or Nas Reed are the two best fits because they can defend multiple positions. They can hit the three. They're willing to get slimy, gritty, make hustle plays. They play physical basketball. They've played in some really big moments in their respective careers. Keep in mind that we've talked about K.J. Martin being involved in a trade, and you just brought it up because he makes $8 million. You have to stay kind of close to that number. He can be used as the salary matcher, and then it would be attractive for a team to bring him in to match those salaries because the second year is non-guaranteed. Mitch Kofsky, what's good, Brody? Love the profile picture, rocking the Sixers jersey. I'm always a fan of wearing a jersey with a hoodie underneath. I think it's one of the best looks out there if you were to rock a jersey. So, good choice by you. Out of the new big three, whose points per game is going to drop? Very good question. Look at what Embiid, Maxi, and George did last year. Embiid, obviously a shortened season because of injury, 34.7 points per game. Maxi at 25.9, Paul George at 22.6. The field goal efficiency very good for these three players. And then for the big three, the three-point numbers also excellent. I think for the Sixers to be the best team that they can be, Joel Embiid has to be less involved in the offense. So I'm going to go with Joel Embiid's numbers going down a little bit. And he's the one member of the big three whose scoring drops the most. I think Tyrese Maxey can go up. I think Paul George can fluctuate depending on his fit and usage. And I think the fit and usage is going to be fine. But Embiid at 34.7, that's tough to duplicate, especially on this team. And I think he's the player who has to make some sacrifices to let Maxey and George cook. Because I think the Sixers are a better off basketball unit if that were to happen. Chip, are you with me? Do you disagree? Your thoughts on this? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the Joel Embiid front. I think he's going to take a little bit of a step back statistically. He still has the talent by far to be able to put up 33, 34, 35 points a game. But yeah. one, I don't think he feels the need to anymore with these other guys supporting him. I think, as you said, I believe Max, he makes the jump from about 25, 26 up to maybe 28, 29. Paul George probably just stay around that 20 to 22, 23 number. But now Embiid can 
take a, a lesser load on the offensive end. He had the highest usage rate in the NBA last season before he went down with his injury. That's just not a sustainable, you know, metric for him to carry into the playoffs and in an entire season because there's just too much responsibility on him from a health perspective of how much you have to use him. Maybe now he can focus a little more back in on the defensive side of the ball where he was making all defensive teams earlier in his career, but of course exerting so much energy in the offensive end. He's still one of the better defenders in the league, but taking a, a slight step back from a you know statistical perspective there. So I do think Embiid, out of those three, his scoring probably does drop a little bit, maybe down to around 30, 29. But his impact on this team, no doubt, I think, will still remain the same. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you there. And that's fine, right? I mean, when you bring in a player like Paul George, you have to know that players are going to have to make sacrifices. Joel Embiid knows he's not going to get as many offensive opportunities when you have a Paul George on your team. That's just the reality of the situation. Next one coming in from Marks. To be honest, as a Philly sports fan, I'm actually more excited about the Sixers, more than I am about the Eagles, which is crazy, being that the NFL season is starting in a couple of weeks. You know, it's funny. Like, I'm so excited for the Eagles season. I cover the Philadelphia Eagles on Philadelphia Eagles. Now that channel, by the way, is closing in on 80,000 subscribers. So check us out over there. Myself and Chip, I think, do some great work in covering the birds. I am also very excited about the Sixers, though, just because of this newly constructed roster. They haven't made it past the second round since 2001, so that really does dull the excitement that a lot of us have for this team. But I felt as though, in just hosting this show, that there is just a reinvigorated type of hype and excitement around this team, and rightfully so. So, Marks, I don't think you're far off. I'm fascinated to see how this team comes together. Let's ask the people. More excited to watch the Eagles Type E or the 76ers Type 7-6 down in the comment section. Let me know right now. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button here on 76ers Now, bringing you some great content here on this channel. And this is the standard, so we're going to keep it up.